Hello, hello. This is Donna Marie Johnson. I'm coming to you from near Atlanta, Georgia, and in the U.S. of A. And I am just sharing about what's been going on with me. Um, I recently posted a blog article entitled um, "My Promise." It's okay. Just got interrupted by another call, but anyway. This uh, blog article called My Promise is kind of like a little bit of a confessional. Also a perfectionism um, confessional. Um, honestly, I never really could get perspective or see how destructive perfectionism is until pretty much this year. Um, well, I won't say that. I'd say I, I really started to become much more aware of it over the last maybe two or three years, but I feel like I really understand what um, it looks like when perfectionism is trying to take over. I feel like I really understand that more now than I ever have before, and which is a great thing. It means that I won't just say, oh, you know, I'm not a perfectionist anymore. I know that's not right. Um, just saying it is not enough. Um, it, perfectionism, when you've been through the things I've been through, it's ingrained in you. You're trained to be a perfectionist from a young child by people who think that that is a healthy, good way to be. But it's not. It's actually unhealthy. It's destructive. And it's also very deceptive and insidious. And so I shared on my blog, I'm not going to go into all the details of what's on the blog. If you want to read that, you're welcome to do that at leadlikeaqueen.com for its slash blog. But um, anyway, I recognize now in, in different ways how the perfectionism <clears throat> that I always lived in before <clears throat> caused problems for me and for those around me. Before I used to just think that was being excellent and you know I get things done I get it done right I'm effective I'm efficient etc but the perfectionism causes certain attitudes certain ways of thinking and believing that really impact how you live um, pr uh, primarily uh, it affects relationships because you're so hyper focused on whatever it was that you were trying to perfect that you're not truly present with the people. And I talked about this in the blog a little bit. You're not really truly present with the people that you're with when you're with them. Your mind is on that thing. When you're a workaholic, you don't, you can't leave your work at work. It's then now people working from home. This is, this can be very destructive. If you're, if you don't have control over your schedule and you're only working all the time and you're not spending time with your family, with your pets, you know, whoever it is that needs you, needs you present with them, that's very unhealthy. Now, we, we talk about the, a lot of people who are coaches and like I am, I am a coach, um, who are coaches and speakers and authors will talk about these things, will write about these things, but we don't really always share what it really looks like when perfectionism is causing problems. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm sharing. This is part, this is healing for me, but it also helps me to keep my promise. Okay. So sharing this is, I'm not sharing this just to say, Hey, you can't be a perfectionist. I'm sharing this to say, Hey, you got to understand what that really looks like first before you can even try to address it. You got to understand what it looks like. So um, I just described part of that. When you're a workaholic, you've got that mindset of trying to perfect everything. It is totally impossible. It is unrealistic. It's insanity to think that you can ever be perfect, that your work can ever be perfect. Um, for those of you who are writers and speakers, you write your own things, your own uh, speeches, you know, it's never perfect. You just keep going back and editing and re-editing, which is good to a point. But there's a point to which um, all of this perfectionism uh, 
meaning that you're trying to get every little detail right all the time, there's a point to which that becomes unhealthy. And so being able to recognize what that looks like for you, and it looks completely different for different people. For me, um, in the past, re regarding my academic pursuits, being in school, I'm in graduate school, I'm in my last four classes, and I'm in my last two of four classes um, starting next week. That in the past has looked like total freak out before classes even start total freak out during the first week of classes to the point where, um, you know, I tried to shut out all distractions while well, I'm married with children. I'm a caregiver to my spouse. And now I also have a dog. I can't possibly shut out all distractions all the time, especially because I'm at home. I don't have places to go like I used to. I used to just go hide in the library or at Starbucks. Those options are no longer available to me. So now it's a matter of making sure that I'm not trying to um, get out of balance like I used to. I used to get way out of balance, um, just studying 24 seven, burning myself out. Yeah, I got great grades, but at what cost? So this is something that I just want to share with other people because like I said, it helps me, but I believe that maybe it'll help somebody else take a closer look at what does perfectionism look like for you? You know, are you a person that's writing and can never get anything published because you're always editing? You're never ready to launch it, to let it go, to release it? Are you a person who is um, procrastinating about calling People, let's say that you're in a sales position and you're, or you have a business or you have, um, or you're in a direct sales um, opportunity and you never call people because you just can't figure out what's the exact right way to talk to people. Usually there's some type of script available and usually you're not supposed to read that word for word. You just use it as a guide for your conversations, but you still got to get on the phone. You got to pick up that phone. You got to call people. You can't make everything perfect. You got to go with the flow sometimes. Sometimes you just have to do what needs to be done the best you can do and keep it moving. And so, you know, that's where I'm at now. I'm, I'm faced with this challenge this semester to do things differently than I've done before, to focus on um, keeping my boundaries up, create boundaries for my study so that I study at specific times for a specific time frame that I take breaks at specific times for a specific time frame and that I, I release and let go. And in grad school, it's all writing. That's all we do is write. We write, if not actual papers, we're writing discussion board posts. So they give us a specific timeline that everything has to be turned in. So you can't hold on to it too long because you'll either not get a grade for discussion boards they have to be posted on time or you won't get a grade at all they either won't get a grade or they'll get a late penalty so you have to let it go you have to to um keep those boundaries on yourself so that you can stay within those guidelines well for certain things other people don't impo don't impose due dates or due times for you you have to do that yourself you have to set those boundaries and i'm so grateful got a good friend that's got a great business going where she helps uh, mom, entre mom entrepreneurs to learn how to create those boundaries for themselves and learn how to, um, you know, build their confidence in just moving forward and not having to be perfect all the time. So I'm really grateful for the help I've been receiving. And I'm also grateful to God for helping me to see more clearly on this topic, see what this really looks like for me and let this stuff go. Go. this is just not healthy I'm not willing to keep living my life stressed out you know when you're a perfectionist that hurts your stomach I mean it, it just you're putting so much stress and pressure on yourself I'm, I'm not willing to do that to myself anymore this year has to be different because I'm thinking differently about things so I'm excited to see how things play out I trust God that my grades will be just fine without me going back into those old bad habits so I hope this is a blessing to you. 
If you would like to share your own story with me, I'd love to hear it. Go to readlikeaqueen.biz forward slash blog, B-L-O-G, and you'll see the post there about my promise. And you can, um, you can read that. And then if you'd like to share at the end, I actually have a prompt question that I'd like for you to answer. So I'd love to hear from you, hear your story. I will not share your story with other people unless you tell me to share it. But I'd love to hear from other people and hear what they're going through, how they're addressing this or not. You know, if you're really struggling with this and, and you hate dealing with this and you don't want to deal with it, I'd love to hear that too. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.